of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us begin by praying for the Pope. In particular, we pray that he may be obedient to God and consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the manner requested by Our Lady of Fatima. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We are in the month of May, in the year of our Lord, 2020. We continue to endure chastisements sent from heaven. First, the coronavirus. Next, persecution from our own governments in the form of extreme lockdowns and nefarious restrictions on the public practice of our holy religion. And then the worst, which is the spiritual chastisement. For the past two months, almost all public masses have been canceled and many churches remain closed even for Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Easter Sunday, and the Octave of Easter. Our shepherds have abandoned their flocks. Instead of defending our holy religion and imploring God for mercy with more masses, more processions, and more public prayers of reparation, the bishops themselves are canceling masses and closing churches. Incredible, terrible. It is terrifying to see how low we have sunk to in the year of our Lord, 2020. Today's church hierarchy is infested with Judases. There are too many to count. What can we do? Follow the plan that God has given to our times through his most holy mother. Listen to the message of Fatima and work hard, that is, with faith and love, to put it into practice. One, stay in the state of grace. Two, pray the rosary daily. Three, wear the brown scapular and piously use the church's sacramentals. Four, pray and sacrifice for sinners. And five, pray for the Pope and the consecration of Russia. This is the final talk in a series of six talks on Our Lady of Fatima's plan to defeat the coronavirus and prevent future chastisements. In this sixth and final talk, I implore you to pray for the Pope and to pray for the papacy, and specifically, Pray that the Holy Father will consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as requested by Mary at Fatima. I want to begin this talk by emphasizing that we continue to live in a state of grave disobedience to God and His Most Holy Mother. This is very serious. This in and of itself already explains why we are having to endure so many chastisements. On July the 13th, 1917, Our Lady of Fatima said, quote, 
If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. Close quote. And on June the 13th, 1929, the Virgin Mary appeared to Sister Lucia in Tui, Spain, and said, quote, The moment has come when God asks the Holy Father to make, in union with all the bishops of the world, the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, promising to save it by this means. Close quote. Going all the way back to 1929, there is not a single pope who has obeyed God's command. We are living in a state of grave disobedience to God, and we continue to suffer through the devastating consequences of such disobedience. There is a massive crisis in the church. There is a massive crisis of faith. There is a massive crisis in the sacraments. And there is a massive crisis in the papacy. Jorge Bergoglio is truly evil. The solution is for the Holy Father to obey God and consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in union with all the bishops of the world. Catholic authority has to be exercised and it has to be exercised in accord with God's will. In this statement, there is much food for thought because yes, Catholic authority is essential to God's plan of salvation and as Catholics, we have to obey. But, Catholic authority must also always be exercised in a sacred way in accord with God's will. Never to persecute the good. Never to go against Catholic tradition. Never to prohibit and persecute the traditional Latin Mass. Never, for example, to cancel public Masses and to forbid the faithful to receive Holy Communion as we must uh, as Catholics, um, faithful to our tradition, faithful to the sacredness of the Holy Eucharist, receiving Holy Communion on the tongue. Now with regard to the consecration of Russia, there are many who have claimed and even continue to claim that Russia has already been consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Not so. While the popes have made numerous consecrations, for example, Pius XII in 1942 and 1952, and John Paul II in 1984, none of the consecrations have been done with true obedience. That is, according to Our Lady's specific requests, which are, A, the Pope must consecrate Russia by name to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. B, all the Catholic bishops of the world are to do this in union with him. And C, this is to be done in a public ceremony. This has never been done. We continue to live in a state of grave disobedience. The strongest proof that this has not been done is that we have had no period of peace in the world, nor has Russia been converted to the Catholic faith. Yet this is what our Blessed Mother promised would happen when the consecration of Russia was done. There has been no peace in the world. In the 20th century alone, over 230 million people have been killed by wars and violence. And this does not include 
the hundreds of millions of innocent babies killed by abortion. The 20th century was the most violent in all of human history, with more people being killed during its course than in all other centuries combined. No period of peace in the world. In fact, quite the opposite. More horrific violence, more murdering, even of the most innocent. And Russia has not converted to the Catholic faith. The nation of Russia has an approximate population of 145 million. There are only around 775,000 Catholics in Russia that are in union with the Pope, which is about 0.5% of the total population. We know for certain that the Blessed Virgin Mary always keeps her promises. So, if Russia has not yet converted, this means that the consecration has not been done according to Our Lady's specific instructions. End of story. So, we ask, why must the Pope consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary? The simplest answer is that this is what God has commanded through his most holy mother, and we must obey. Up until now, May of 2020, the popes have failed to obey. Obedience to God's holy will is central to our salvation. Jesus and Mary were both perfect in their obedience to God's holy will. And we must do the same, beginning with the Pope, beginning with the bishops, beginning with the priests. The Fatima message is profoundly theocentric. It is centered on God. And amongst the most important ways of making reparation to God for having offended God, is to obey God. We must be obedient first and foremost to God and His most holy and adorable will. When the Pope consecrates Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as requested by Our Lady of Fatima, the Pope will be obeying God. And herein lies salvation, life, and peace. I'd like to take a few minutes to reflect on the significance of the Pope consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The Pope, in union with all the world's bishops, consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary will serve to exalt both the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Catholic Church before the entire world, which in turn gives all glory and honor to Jesus Christ the King because these are the great channels which he has willed to use to communicate to us the salvation, grace, and merit he won for us by his passion and death on the cross. All salvation and grace comes to us from Jesus. But these come to us through Mary and through the Catholic Church, her sacraments and her hierarchy, especially the Pope. God wills to make more manifest to the world the marvels of his redemption, especially these great channels of the grace of redemption, the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Catholic Church church. God wills to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary through the message of Fatima. The five first Saturdays devotion is meant to foster this devotion and to bring about Mary's reign in individual souls. The more devoted we are to Mary's Immaculate Heart, the more our hearts 
become like hers, totally belonging to God, seeking only God's will, and seeking only God's honor and glory. Once Mary lives and reigns in individual souls, she brings in a most pure way the reign of her son in his sacred heart. The consecration of Russia to Mary's Immaculate Heart is meant to bring ultimately the reign of Christ the King, not only to Russia, but to all nations, to the entire world. This will bring with it a period of peace. The fruits of devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, particularly the conversion of Russia, will show the entire world how powerful Mary's intercession is with God. Russia is the largest country in the world and over the past century, it has spread its horrific errors, the principal one being atheism, throughout the world. There is so much evil, including pornography, promiscuity, and abortion, that has its origins in the errors of Russia. And yet, Russia will be converted once it is consecrated to Mary's Immaculate Heart. The conversion of Russia to the Catholic faith will be such a grand miracle that it will be the sign to all the world of the truth and power of God, the Virgin Mary, and the Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church. And so now I will make a few comments on the Pope and the papacy. The message of Fatima places great emphasis on the role of the Holy Father and on the papacy in general. Our Lady herself warns that, quote, the Holy Father will have much to suffer, close quote. And I think this has reference not only to an individual pope, but to the office of the papacy in general. In other words, that the papacy will suffer much and that not only an individual Holy Father will have much to suffer, but the original Holy Father, St. Peter, that St. Peter will have much to suffer to see the great crisis that is taking place in the papacy. Jacinta had a private vision of the Holy Father weeping while being insulted and persecuted. And she always made it a point to pray specifically for the Holy Father and to make sacrifices specifically for the Holy Father. This is a very important part of the message of Fatima, to make every possible effort to be praying specifically for the Holy Father, to making sacrifices specifically for the Pope. Because there's also a great warning in Fatima of a terrible crisis that will afflict the papacy. And don't forget the vision of the third secret of Fatima, which was made public in the year 2000, because basically this vision centers on the Pope. The Pope is passing through a city ravaged by war. He climbs a mountain with a cross at the top, and there at the top of the mountain he is martyred by soldiers with both bullets and arrows. It is a vision of great suffering, great persecution, martyrdom of the Holy Father, and by extension we could say of the papacy. And it is extremely likely that the missing text of the third secret of Fatima warns of a terrible crisis in the papacy. For example, warning of a false pope. Right now, at present, 
There is no question that we are witnessing a terrible crisis in the papacy. The present crisis that is afflicting the church is a crisis of faith, but it is also a crisis of the papacy and a crisis of authority. It is very interesting because ever since the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima, all of the popes have made a special effort to place great emphasis on the apparitions of Fatima. There isn't a single apparition of our Blessed Mother, or really any apparition at all for that matter, that has received anywhere close to the papal approbation that Fatima has received. Pope after Pope has um, given great um, encouragement uh, to the faithful to visit Fatima. They themselves have visited Fatima multiple times. They have preached uh, there at the shrine of Fatima. Um, our Holy Father, uh, Pope John Paul II, even uh, attributes the saving of his life to a miracle, uh, the intercession of Our Lady of Fatima. So all of this emphasis on the part of the popes on the message of Fatima, uh, so many times that the popes have um, made certain types of consecrations of Russia and the world uh, in accord, um, not completely in accord, but let's say uh, in basic accord with what has been requested uh, by Our Lady of Fatima. So all of this has been taking place, and yet the popes continue to disobey the most important request and command of God and Our Lady that is given at Fatima relevant to them, namely to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And in many ways, I think this is kind of a microcosm of the crisis that is afflicting the papacy. Because especially with regard to the popes of the post-Vatican II period, well, what we see is that they are exercising their authority, they're exercising their papacy, I mean, they're carrying on their papacy, and yet, in the most important ways, they continue to disobey. They continue to disobey the venerable tradition, the venerable liturgical tradition of the Catholic Church. In many ways, instead of transmitting faithfully the, in all its purity, church doctrine. This is central to the mission of the Pope. This is why the Pope has authority. Instead of doing that, and instead of being vigilant in transmitting that faithfully, and, and guarding the sacred deposit of faith from even the slightest misinterpretation or error, the Popes, the po the popes of post-Vatican do, they've spent a great part of their time and of their authority undermining this and seeking ways of being relevant to modern times and of thinking that they have to update the practice of our Catholic religion. Truly, there is a terrible crisis afflicting our papacy. And remember, it isn't just a question that Catholic authority is essential to God's plan of salvation. That's true. And papal authority is essential to God's plan of salvation. No question about this. This is why it's essential to our salvation as Catholics to be obedient to our superiors and to, to be obedient to the Pope. But we cannot forget what Fatima is also teaching us and warning us about. And that is that Catholic authority, especially that of the Pope, it must be, it must be, exercised in a most holy way, that is, in accord with God's holy will, to protect and defend the Lex Orandi and the Lex Credendi of the Catholic Church. One final thing to mention about the Pope consecrating, excuse me, the Pope consecrating Russia 
to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is that by doing this, the Pope by doing this, all will thus recognize the authority of the Pope as the Vicar of Christ. All of the bishops, because they are united to him and obeying him and also consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And also, even the secular authority will recognize the authority that the Pope has, not only his spiritual power, but also his temporal power, and also the fact that all secular power is, is subservient to the power of the Pope. That is, that all secular authority that is exercised must always serve the spiritual good of souls. It must always serve the truth. And therefore, it is under the uh, ultimate authority of the Pope. And the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by the Pope will make this manifest because only one who has authority over something may truly consecrate it. And here the Pope will be consecrating not only any secular nation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but the one that has most deviated from the truth and the one that is most deviated from God. Conclusion. Please, every single one of you, Make it a priority to pray for the Pope, pray for the papacy, pray for the true, holy and Catholic exercise of Catholic authority, and pray specifically for the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary by the Pope and all the bishops of the Catholic Church in union with him. And so also, please continue to pray the 54-day Rosary Novena. This is taking place from May the 1st to June the 23rd, and it's for this specific intention, the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If you have not yet started this Novena, I strongly encourage you, begin it today. And you can go to the website of the Fatima Center for guidance on that. Please share this message of Our Lady of Fatima's five-point plan with everyone that you know. Share it with them and encourage them to share it with others. And thank you for your continued support of the Fatima Center. I will now, I will now give you my priestly blessing. Dominus vobiscum et cum spiritu tu. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis, Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti descendat super vos et maneat semper. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. <laughs>